one shot back. That title. You guys want any of this stuff I got from the snack bar? I find Dale's use of the word got rather than bought somewhat suspicious. Just sit back there and watch the movie. If we want something, we'll send you a smoke signal. Jesus, Chip, all he did was offer you some food. Monty isn't mesmerized by the cheese on this pizza. No one but the Rangers notices these shadows on the projector screen. Bud chooses to take the bugs flying in front of the projector just so the Rangers would notice what he was doing. Ah, uh, hey! This one's a bug! Or, you know, not a lightning bug. A chieftain's hair. Sounds like a pretty hairy mission to me. Hair pun. I don't think we're going about this cleanup in the right way. What was your first clue? Hey, Dale, you know this whole mess was your fault, right? <laughs> Why can't you do that, Chip? You're just as close to it. Then Bob's gummed up the controls! Really? It looked fine a few seconds ago. Did Winifred vacuum them up? Golly, Chip! If it weren't for Dale's bubble gum, we'd still be falling! No, you'd have hit the ground by now. Also, Gadget seems to have forgotten that the bubble gum was the reason for this accident in the first place. Foxglove catches Dale in her mouth. Next shot, she is holding him by her feet. Did you get something in your eye? This question makes no sense. What does Foxglove see in Dale exactly? I know I've pissed off 90% of the fandom by asking that, but I don't care. I want to know, damn it. And all the items are crossed off except the last two. The last three, actually. We'll all be glad to see you. Yeah. What's Dale's issue with Fox Club visiting? You three have done a good job. But there was only two of us, Freddy. I told you never to call me Freddy. Um, Bud has a point, Winifred. Are you just going to ignore it? Give me the list. I must have lost it. Well, it's a good thing I remember the final two ingredients. Then why did you ask for the list? Where are you? Oh. Chip initially acts shocked that Dell landed on him, but quickly retracts the shock when he sees Foxglove. As if Foxglove being there makes it perfectly understandable that Dale will be landing on him. Hair today, gone tomorrow! Hair pun take two. And here she comes! Hair pun, oh, forget it. What's with Chip, Dale, and Foxglove's shocked expressions here? I may be able to whip us up a temporary replacement. Wait, so it takes weeks to fix one plane, but building a new one from scratch only takes one day? Why does Bud yell at this security guard? Does he understand him? Am I supposed to be surprised that Fox Club works for Winifred? We hear Bud and Lou talk about another helper she has at the start of the episode. She was at the drive-in and the police picnic for no clear reason, and she's the only other character we've been introduced to during the episode. Who else could they possibly have been talking about? What's Fox Club been doing all day? It was day when she left the Rangers, and now it's the middle of the night. The paper with the list of ingredients on it has grown immensely since the last scene. What is really the purpose of the Rangers having a different mode of transport for the second half of this episode? Did Disney just want to sell Bagpipe Express playsets? Get it, love! You've done it again! Whatever it is! Kind of a backhanded compliment there, Monty. Poor Bart! Uh, give me something to shoot! Why don't you just catch one of their projectiles like you did before? Those moldy muppets have my moon rock! I'll tear them apart! For what? Allowing you to fire it at them? It's not that I don't trust you, sweetie. I just want to make sure you're keeping your promise. So it is that you don't trust her. The moon rock falls along two branches in the ranger's tree when it should logically have just fallen straight to the ground. Careful, Foxglove, you can give people whiplash by doing that. You might say I was just hanging around. Might say? That's exactly what you're doing. This doesn't even count as a pun because it's quite literally true. They don't let me cook. They're afraid I'll break too many dishes. Is he really likely to break many dishes from cooking? Maybe he would if he served and washed up as well, but I don't see him breaking many from just cooking. Yeah, I spent all night digging it out. No, you didn't. Gadget got it out. What is Foxglove saying here? Help! 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 Now that the sun has set! Wait, what? It was early morning when she sucked them up. Now it's sunset and they're still in there? How have they not suffocated? So that's why you were always around when she came over to clean up. It was all a trick to get us to trust you. Wait, Dale, that doesn't make any sense. Why would Winifred want you to trust Foxglove? What would be the benefit of that? <coughs> Dale screams like a woman. Wait, earlier in this episode, Zipper couldn't pull a piece of paper away from some bubble gum. Now he can push a crate ten times his size? <laughs> Why didn't they just come with him in the first place? Taking a sin off here for this awesome line from Bud. Don't touch the tongue! Foxglove explicitly said earlier on that bats can't hover in midair while carrying a lot of weight. So how is she holding that brick? Friends just don't desert friends when there's trouble. Oh, so now you're friends? What was all that uneasiness around her about then? <laughs>
This is an awesome entrance, but why would the Rangers wait until crashing through the window before saying it? This has to be a while after they set off. Your history, fly brain! Considering Zipper is a fly, this isn't much of an insult. Why doesn't Lou just let go of the rope? Also, this is the last time we see Lou, so did he die from that fall? The circumstances of Winifred's arrest and the effects of Dale dropping the screw into the spell are left to our imagination. Characters looking into the camera before falling, cliche. Foxcar presumably fell to her death at the end because she never appeared again. Suppose you walked over there and you bored a hole in that wall. Okay, I walk over there and I bore a hole in the wall. Why? Why should you go over there and bore a hole in that wall? I'm not boring a hole in the wall. Why should you go over there and bore a hole in that wall? Look, Ted, you said to me, suppose you walk over there and bore a hole in the wall. But I was dopey enough to say I'll go and bore a hole in the wall, but you're not gonna put that blame on me. Boosh! Ah, she's attacking me with water!